Oh, oh crikey. <laughs> oh, dear me, this is powering away, this fish. Oh, amazing. Hi, and welcome to Advanced Carp Tactics. My name's Martin Ford, you join us here today at the superb linear complex down in Oxford. We spent the last night on St John's, uh, a very busy, productive water, friend Og, uh, Og of the Wok, and uh, also James Harrison from Advanced Carp Fishing. Uh, we each had a bite apiece. But anyway, we've come away now to the quietness of Hunt's Corner, got my rods out, just want to talk through a few tactics before we go and see the likes of Jan Porter, Ian Poole, Steve Renyard and Andy Little in action on the various linear complex. Anyway, Jan, as you're probably well aware, was once a matchman and sometime back in the summer months he came down to Hunt's Corner and he brought with him some very interesting match tactics which he applied to the big carp scene. Before we go and see what Jan did, I just want to show you something that you probably well may be aware of but is a very, very useful tactic down here at Linear and that's the stick method which has been around for quite a while now. There are many various different mixes. Myself, I prefer some of the Richworth products and I just want to show you a couple of bits and pieces that might aid your fishing if you're ever visiting this part of the country. The mix itself is a bit of a combination really. It's the Richworth Lake XL and a favourite additive of mine which you'll find in a lot of today's modern baits, Robin Red, and that's where the colour comes from and you can play around with these colour combinations to suit the type of water that you're fishing over. One of the most important factors however in any stick mix is the oil. It must have oil content to continuously keep it working and make it attractive to carp that are possibly passing overhead. Now there are many different oils out there. Here's a little ploy that you might want to use. It's just pure salmon oil. You want to try and get as much oil as you possibly can into the dry mix and you want to mix that when mixed just binds together, just enough to hold, like so, so that you can get this into a PVA stick and deliver it out to your swim. The way we do this is purely a case of getting some PVA, and in this case it's the first contact, there's plenty out there, and there's plenty of different systems out there, and it's just a case of putting the mix into the tube pushing the mix through with the aid of some sort of stick or ram like this, pushing the finished stick out and tying it off into the appropriate size tube that you want to deliver. Now this is a favourite tactic to mine on a lot of the linear waters, particularly in the colder months when the fish don't really want piles and piles of bait. And a little tiny hook bait like one of the pellets or a little tiny piece of, I've got another one made up here actually, there's the hook length, little tiny small hook, look, one single bait and then what we do is with the aid of a stringer needle thread the stick onto the needle, pick up the back end of the hook link like this and just 
pull the hook length through the stick out the other side and then very very carefully position the hook into the base end of the stick and draw it right in like so. Now this will actually allow you to use a longer than normal hair because it can't tangle and particularly at the back end of the season when all the weeds dying off this is the perfect presentation. You can put this anywhere and know that once the PVA dissolves you're left with a little tiny pile of feed on the deck with one single hook bait in there and it sometimes pays to use a bit of colour like yellow because it can also be appealing from a taste point of view and a visual point of view. Anyway, let's go back a couple of months when my good friend Jan Porter was here on the banks of Hunt's Corner with his match tactics but very quickly before we go there What's in the wok, Og? Today we'll be cooking oyster chicken with cabbage and leek stir-fry. This should only take about 15 minutes, but it's a very easy meal to make. You get the wok on. Place your chicken breasts into the wok, skin side down, and then just let them slowly cook for about 10 or 15 minutes just depending on how thick your chicken is and then when that's cooked off we'll throw in the stir fry some oyster sauce serve with noodles and the job's done well this is a far cry from my old match days sat here all in the camo gear hunt's corner down at richworth linear and um, I've got to be honest with you it's a, a completely different world this is fishing like i used to do as a kid fishing through the night, camping out, getting cold and hoping that you might catch something that will pull the rod back a bit harder than a roach or a skimmer. And not only have the clothing changed in terms of my angling but also I've had a good long look at baits over the last few years and since I started pleasure fishing really and trying to catch bigger fish it's been a crossover between match fishing equipment and match fishing baits and that old footage on Linear St John's which was taken a few years back shows me really in full flight crossing over from a matchman to a specimen hunter using things like sticky mag things like blasting maggots and stuff like that and catching much smaller carp although I have to say on that day I did hook some pretty big fish that uh, left me all over the place and I couldn't get them in <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> so we've got a bit of a problem here guys <laughs> Things have changed now, a few years down the road, and um, I've started to look at boilies a lot more seriously now. When I first saw a boilie in, uh, in a tackle shop, well, my own tackle shop actually in Nottingham, um, it didn't make any sense to me, you know, it was just a, a bear hook fished on a hair, and these just round balls, they just look like sweets, and I, I really didn't think I could uh, catch a fish on them, let alone sell any of them, but Richworth boilies, um, Tutti Frutti ones are very famous and Lee will tell you a lot more about that, he's, a, he's a certainly a lot more knowledgeable about boilies but the Tutti Frutti boilie rich with the frozen ones is the boilie that caught my first ever carp at Naseby Reservoir in 1991 so I sort of cut my teeth on boilie fishing and though I still wasn't convinced it was going to be the way forward for me and um, whilst you can get boilies of all shapes and sizes I've always stuck to try and use smaller baits and I don't really got much bigger than a, a 14 mil. The ones I like to use are these midi boilies which are about 10 milli and generally fish them in pairs and that always I think gives me a bit of an edge. Sometimes when I would match fishing I'd fish big maggots and then maybe a couple of pinkies on the hook and it's the same kind of thing. Run the changes, try different colours on the hook as to what you're putting out. I think boilies have sort of revolutionised my approach towards fishing and um, what it's enabled me to do is, is to target bigger fish. In the good old days of maggot bashing, you know, you'd be happy to catch pretty much what you could. Uh, trying to always target the, the bigger fish, the sort of, um, what shall we say, the prime fish in the swim. Well, 